so yes, my name is Jarrell Truelove. Uh, you may know my wife, uh, Rebecca, who's been in on some of the conversations. And yes, that is my real last name. It, <laughs> it is True Love. And, um, you know, just a long story short, um, how I ended up in this space where I'm, you know, trying to have these conversations about relationships is, you know, I just experienced a lot of failure, like a lot of us have, like most of us have, really. And so it was after, uh, you know, beginning my relationship with my wife, um, it was where I really had this revelation about how uh, relationships, uh, in my, you know, humble opinion, how relationships should begin, how they should unfold, how they should mature, and just how they should, you know, move forward to the future. And so that is where I had the idea for my book. Uh, and I am the author of the book, Friends First. Uh, Miss Val, I'm uh, <laughs> really happy to see that you got your copy in the mail today. Uh, yeah, friends first, what we get wrong in relationships and how to get it right through friendship. Um, and so, yeah, that's uh, that book is a labor of love. Just me giving the advice I wish I had when I was, you know, 18, 19, just kind of beginning my relationship journey. Um, I feel like it would have saved me a lot of hurt, a lot of miscalculations. And um, I think it can, I know it can be helpful for someone if they're willing to receive it and uh, just give it a try. So yeah, I'm an author uh, currently um, making a transition into, um, you know, taking on relationship coaching clients as well. And I'm just trying to do my best to kind of mend um, even specifically the black community, one relationship at a time. So, um, so yeah, I'm just glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Wow. Wow. Thank you. So in the cause of our discussion, would you give us some nuggets? Because like you, you stated that would you wish you knew certain things at the age of 18? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of us started early, but we had no idea. Yes. Had no training. We, we failed so many times with countless right now. So, um, yeah, if you could give us a little bit of the nuggets as to, although we are older now, it's still very yeah, yeah. essential. I believe that it's still, it's still, it's still going to, it's still going to help us right now. So some nuggets as to what we should look out for. Yes, absolutely. So uh, one of my biggest things I love to communicate to people. And so the, the question I, uh, I start with this, the question is, why do all relationships fail? And I mean, every relationship, you know, that doesn't, you know, end up in marriage and stay in marriage, why do they fall apart? And so the conclusion I came to um, is lack of information. More specifically, we don't get enough information up front about this person to make an educated decision about whether or not we should be with them. So then two years down the line, 20 years down the line, we realize, oh, wait a minute, this, this isn't it. And a lot of times it's that information we, and, and I truly believe that you can get the information you need about somebody up front. The only thing is, is that people don't want to take that time. They feel like they have to like lock it down as fast as possible, or, or they feel like, you know, if I don't do this, then the next person will. So I have to just make sure I show this person I like them. Um, instead of qualifying them, right? You qualify first, then you show them you like them, but only based off of what you know, not what, you know, they look good on my shoulder, but are they good for me? So, um, you know, long story short, lack of information, you know, and I call it closing the gap, right? When you meet someone, there is this large gap of information, right? This unknown information uh -huh. about this person that you don't know. And rather than trying to jump the gap or, or try to find a way around the gap, your job should be to slowly close it, to slowly ask those questions, to slowly ask those questions that if they give the wrong answer, then unfortunately, they're not supposed to be in your life, right? Ask the questions that will disqualify somebody from being with you. Because if you ask those questions and they make it through those, then guess what? Now you're like, oh, man, this is it, right? Uh, and, you know, I guess I'll give you one last point. One thing I like to say is, you know, relationships, love, matters of the heart, they actually do require logical thinking, 
right? Even, you know, when we think about love and relationships, we think about emotion and feeling, right? And just that, that thing that we can't quite put our finger on. But a big component about relationships really is about asking those questions, having those logical discussions um, and, and operating based off of what you know um, and not what you feel or what you desire. And so, yeah, those are just a few uh, main points that I like to kind of communicate to people uh, when I meet them or when we're talking about relationships. Well, that is good. The only thing I find, oh, I have experience with that or even other generations, let's say like my father's generation, is that some people withhold, intentionally withhold that information. They That's just want to get you after they've gotten you, then they'll reveal their true character when they've tied that's you true. down. That's very true. That's very true. Um, so I I have run into a lot of people that have encountered that. And so I, I'm a firm believer that in order to kind of have that mindset shift, you need to become, uh, you need to become a master at guiding the conversations towards the things you want. What happens is usually when we meet people, we, we just want to know, okay, maybe how much money do you make? How good do you look? You know, are you cool to be around? You know, the, the big buzzword is the vibe has to be right or the chemistry, right? If, if the vibe or the chemistry is there, then a lot of times they might be hiding something, but you maybe didn't even ask them, right? So, you know, those two things can be true at the same time. Yeah, they didn't tell you, but did you ask? You know, and so I think that if we could become better about really asking, because, and let me know if you agree with this, I don't think that people can pretend for too long, right? And there's, there's not, um, there's no like concrete date, like, hey, if you just get to know somebody for six months, then on six months and one day, they'll be who they really are. But you know, a lot of times when we meet somebody, it could just be a couple weeks and we're in bed with them or we're going out on dates or introducing them to family. And if you really take a step back and think about it, I have only known this human being for three weeks. I really don't know anything about them. But I, if, if you've known somebody for six months, now that is when you really know who they are. Um, and so, uh, like, you know, to your point, you're right. People do hide, but it's not on us to point the finger at them. It's on us to say, okay, I need to become better at uncovering who somebody is. And if I do that, then I won't have to worry about them hiding because I'll know who they really are. Now that's not something that works hundred percent of the time. There are some rare cases where people just are living double lives, but for the vast majority people really aren't out here pretending. We just need to become better at uncovering, you know, and closing that information gap, like I said earlier. Mm -hmm. Any questions before we continue? Yes. I, I just want to say, I'm sorry uh, for earlier, we have some technical difficulties because we moved <laughs> outside because somebody went to outside. Yes, uh, But thank you so much for those nuggets, JT. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, it's true about, um, people hide things and I feel like people people can be chameleons at times especially in this day and age and they don't show you their true colors and it's true like after six months you will know someone especially if you spend almost like let's say four to five days out of the week with them like you will know them more on a more personal level and I think it was I don't know if it was Steve Harvey that said it takes I know there's like the 90 day rule I don't believe in that but um <laughs> It, I do believe it does take about 90 days, 60 to 90 days to know someone, like nine know months. them. Some people says nine months. Uh, Faith, do you want to say what you said? I said it takes nine months to make a baby, so it should take you nine months to be engaged <laughs> with this person. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> so that's my, that's my, I'm not sure if Valerie had anything to say. I just want to ask a question. So, Okay, if you say that you have to like to uncover the person, to uncover uh, how the person really is. So, mm -hmm. do you have like a, some some kind of techniques that will help us to know how to uncover the person? So, the kind of question to ask the person, and also, 
I, uh, uh, do, does you have to ask direct question? How do you ask the direct question without offending the person? So without. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. And I can easily answer that for you. So the first part is uh, maybe like a technique or an approach or what I like to call like, uh, I call it the big six, right? It is the areas of information that you need to uncover about somebody uh, before you consider a serious relationship. Um, and so those six areas are, and this is in order of importance, trauma, right? What trauma they have been through and not even what they've been through, if they're working through it or if they're not working through it and what that looks like and how you can be a part of it. Uh, number two, conflict resolution. Now this is really closely tied to the first one, but in life, in relationships, conflict is guaranteed. It is going to happen. And so if you are, you know, let's say we're, you know, talking about marriage, which is supposed to be a lifelong commitment, right? How are you going to stay with someone for the rest of your life if you don't know how to resolve conflict? So you need to know what they do when they're upset, what they do when they're offended, do they raise their voice? And trauma will affect that, right? But you need to know what does resolving a conflict look like for us and how do we move past it, right? Uh, number three is religion. You have to know what, um, what religion looks like for them. Um, what their preferences are, because religion guides, um, you know, when they go to church, if they pray, how often they pray, if they go to Bible study, if they don't, if they go to, you know, if they go to, you know, choir practice, if they, it, it, it guides so many uh, facets of their life. Um, and I looked at a couple of studies or statistics, and I know that uh, interfaith marriages are actually on the rise, I believe, where two people are of a different uh, religious uh, of faith, but at the end of the day, you really need to know where their position is with faith and, and how that will look uh, between you two, right? That's number three. Number four is finances, um, but it is not, it's not enough about how much do you make. It is how much do you save? It is, do you have a budget? It is, do you finance everything or do you save up and buy it in cash? Um, you know, it, it, it is it is every question you can think about about generating money and 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 stewarding and shepherding money. Right. You you have to know that. Right. Um, so that's number four. Number five is children. You have to know their views on children, but not just how many children do you want and when do you want them? Right. We, we're you know, in everything I'm talking we're not talking about surface level questions. We're talking about how do you raise children? More specifically, how would you raise a son? How would you raise a daughter? Do you want them to learn multiple languages? Do you want them to have a passport when they're five? You know, do you, do you know I mean, do you want them to try different cultural foods? Do you, you know what I mean? How do you want them to celebrate Black History Month? You know, like the, there's an endless amount of questions, right? That you can ask. And so that's number six. And then the last one is lifestyle. Right. And I like to think of the last one as how the first five show up in the real world. Right. So what you, obviously you have to drive a car. What kind of car do you want to drive? Most people like vacations, but when, how often and where. Right. Oh, you like to travel. Do you like international travel? You know, you know, OK, you want to retire when? you know, you know, I mean, that, so lifestyle is how do you want to live your life, right? So those are the six areas that if you're looking for a husband or a wife, you have to know those before, in my opinion, before you say we're boyfriend and girlfriend or official, you have to get that because anything that you don't get now on the other side of being official if it comes up, oh man, this this person makes a lot of money, but they're terrible with money. Now you have to now you have to have a conversation. Now you have to potentially go through a breakup or, God forbid, a divorce, simply because you didn't want to ask them detailed questions, right? So that's part one. So then uh, the second part of your question was like the questions or how do you uh, ask a question that doesn't offend? So back to what I said earlier, you have to become a master 
at guiding conversations towards the things you want. So I, this is a very popular example I use uh, uh, when I'm speaking, uh, specifically to women. I ask them, okay, if you met a man today, how long would you like it to be before he proposes to you, right? So let's just say that's a year and a half. Let's just say it's 18 months. So then if and when you meet a guy, you don't say, hey, so uh, how soon do you propose to women, right? You, you know, you don't do that. You say, hey, what does the next 18 months look like for you? What does the next two years look like? Or man, in a perfect world, how would things unfold between us, right? You're not pressuring him and giving him an ultimatum. You're just allowing him to answer honestly. And here's the thing. He might say, eh, I'm not really seeing marriage in the next five years. Then that is when you have your cue. You know what? He's not it. And, and so you have to become a master of that. Also, one uh, tip that I like to use, you're right. Sometimes you don't want to um, ask people certain things. So what I always do is I say, hey, um, so I read this article the other day oh. about, <laughs> uh, right? I read this article or I saw this random post about women earning more money than men. You know, how do you feel about that? And that immediately takes it away from you and him. It's not about you and him. It's about the article. So, but you can still get the answer you're looking for without it feeling like an interrogation. It's just feeling more like a conversation about an article. And, you know, and one last pro tip is usually I'll share my opinion first. Instead of saying, how do you feel? I'll say, yeah, I read this article. Here's how I feel. What do you think about that? And that's a, that's a great way to ask those questions and get that information from, from anybody you're talking to. That is great, but... Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't find a lot of men intellectual enough. Ooh, uh, okay. Uh, wait, yeah, because it's like they don't want to delve into the, the meat of the matter. So this is what you're talking about is, is great. We are all supposed to do it, women. And you, you, of course, you don't have to do it within a month. You have to do it like as time progresses, as you get to know the person. But if they, yeah, if they don't have good intentions for you, you would figure it out as you ask those questions. Mm -hmm. But I feel like men don't, some men, I beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah, no, you're fine. And some men don't process before they even approach the woman. So you can ask all these questions and still will not give you like, what are you thinking before approaching me? They, they don't have any answers. You know what? I'm going to agree with you. So but I'm going to agree with you. Um, I will say this, one thing that I know about using this approach to, to prioritizing getting to know people before you get involved seriously is that you will feel like everyone else is rushing and you'll feel left behind because you everyone is just so used to like rushing, rushing, rushing. So when you hit the brake pedal, it's going to feel like everyone's running past you. It's going to feel like everyone isn't interested in talking. They just want to buy a drink or take you out and see where it heads. And so I would say that that's one of the drawbacks of taking your time is you'll feel like, man, where are all the serious men at? But here's the thing. If we learn how to pick better, we only have to get it right one time. Right. You're, you're right. If the goal is marriage and the goal is to stay married, it should be a one time decision. And decisions like that, they do take a little bit longer to happen. And so you are right there. I mean, I've heard it and I've seen it. There's a lot of men out there. They're, they're not they're not on that on that path. No. But your goal is to find that one. And, the, and you know, it does require the patience, but he is out there. He's ready to have those conversations. He's ready to get to know you. Now, there is a small nuance to that. It is all in maybe where you met him and how you met him, right? That might also give him the assumption that, oh, yeah, this is, I just need to figure out if this is a good time and move on. So that's another conversation as well. But 
you know, your job is, is in slowing down and becoming friends first. It's really, you're just looking for that one right man. And, and, but once you get it, you can say, man, I got him. I know he's it. Cause I asked the questions. I got the answers. He wanted to talk to me. I asked him about marriage and he didn't run away. You know, he had the conversation. Then you can say, he's it. He, you know what I mean? Then you, then you go all in, but you have to slow down and, and pace yourself, if that makes sense. So then can you, can you, can you be seeing two men at the same time and figuring out who is who? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Oh, sorry. You better not. You, <laughs> <laughs> she said, of course, of course, child. Uh, <laughs> you, so that's a good question. Yes, you can, but if you are being friends, but let me qualify yeah, that. that. Uh, let me qualify that. I don't mean friendly to get what you want. I mean, an actual friend who is actually getting to know people, who's actually having those real conversations, who's not Netflixing and chilling or going out on dates, because let's, be, let's just be really honest. When a man takes you out on a date, He's expecting something, right? And it, listen, I, let's talk about this. A date is an invitation. Uh, a date as the gateway to a possible relationship in the future. That is what a date is. And when you <laughs> accept that date, you're saying, you know what? Even if it's a very small possibility, you're saying there is a possibility. Even if you know that's not true, that is what a date is. And so, so yes, you can entertain the company of many men as long as you are doing it from a neutral position and a fact-finding position and really trying to get to know these men. That's, that's my stance on that. I don't know if anyone agrees or disagrees. But, but if you give me a date, it is it's just a day. I'm not I'm not signing any contract with you. You you have <sighs> you're having my presence as we're just going out to eat as friends. Okay. Well, yes. Um if I'm a bit traditional, out, so excuse me. I'm a bit on the old side of things. <laughs> no, no, I <laughs> I understand that. Um I don't want to say all men, but I will say the vast majority of men, if we are now, let me qualify date. Usually a date is going to be later in the evening. Usually you two are going to dress nicer. And usually the, the bill or the tab is going to be a little bit higher than normal, right? Usually, usually there's valet, right? <laughs> right? Usually, so, so that's a date. Now, if you want to hang out, you know, do it doesn't mean you can't do things together. Um, but once you start dipping into the date realm that's to me when it gets a little bit tricky because at that point unfortunately yes men are saying you know what if if you're letting me spend 300 dollars on you which in the grand scheme is not a million dollars but still you know i'm giving you something i'm assuming that you have you know there's a possibility that i'll get something is you know in the future Um, Miss Bella and Faith, I think you had your hand raised. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to welcome uh, the new people that joined Alma. us today. Right now we have Thelma and then we have yeah. Samsung. I'm sorry, I wanted to get your name. Just thank you for joining. Um, uh, sorry, my name is Solomon. Solomon. Okay, Solomon, thank you so much for joining. Hey. Um, so we have our guest speaker tonight, Jarrell, True Love. So if any of you guys have any questions, feel free to raise your hand. Or um, you, if you can't, if you're in a noisy environment, you can go ahead and put your question in the chat and it will get read out. Um, if you are in a noisy environment, please keep your phones on mute so we can honor our guest and be attentive to him. Thank you so much, Jarrell, for those nuggets. I will have questions in a few, but I do want to give you <laughs> the opportunity to also answer questions. I know Faith has a lot to say, so um, <laughs> I'll let her go last. <laughs> but go ahead, JT. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we ask a question? Yes, absolutely. Okay, actually, one first and foremost, Jero, I, I just like your last name if it's your real last name, True Love. So I think yeah. I'm going to change mine. To, I'm going to change mine to Real Love. I like it. 
<laughs> hey. Appreciate it, Solomon. Appreciate it. Yes, that's my real. <laughs> I, I, so I think I heard when I was talking, and I know in the last point that you mentioned, saying that, you know, going to a date. For my little experience, I mean, well, let me just give my introduction. So I, I have been married. As I speak to you, I'm going through a process of divorce, which mm -hmm. is a very horrible position to be in because yeah. that is not what one anticipated basically how I wanted my life to be. You know, I'm not a great person in divorce, but it is what it is. It's happening. And um, each day, each day feels like, like it never ends. You just wish like the day will come and go so you could just move on, but it, it is very painful. But with that said, those that are on this um, 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 forum, you know, whether married or not married, the question you need to know for me, from a guy perspective, what does a female want? Right? They will have all these high list of things that they want to see from a man or want from a man. But then when they reconcile the same list against themselves, you realize that they show for, they fall short. Mm. Then Question. how do we address that to start off with? Mm. with any because, in, 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 because, in, in, because you mentioned that you go on a date, right? In the date making, depending on what type of guy, the guy may not even have a car. The guy may not even dress up. He will come in probably, you know, I guess jeans, you know, t-shirt hanging. And then you, the female, thinking that you've made every effort looking nice and as usual, you're going to turn your nose. The whole thing is going to put, you know, it's going to, it's, it's, it's just going to basically piss you off. But nonetheless, you're going to put a front just to attend to hear what, or to see how the night goes. Right? Or you may also get somebody who was suit. He comes in, the whole works. But then as you guys sit down and talk, you realize that, hold on, Everything that's coming out of this guy's mouth really is absolute garbage. Yeah, yeah. So I know I've, I've kind of hit certain points. I've got so much to say, but I don't think we have enough time to talk about this. But nonetheless, just help me to understand that bit where you know, our sisters, where do they come from? You know, what, what is their goal? What do they need? And have they reconciled the list to themselves? Hmm. Uh, Faith has something to say, so I'm gonna let Faith Faith go. If no one, yes, <laughs> I mean, we can't answer that. The reason being is because we haven't been every woman in the world. It depends on the specific woman you're looking for. I mean, a lot of this stuff is, you know, you can't put more energy into the vehicle you select and take care of your vehicle than a relationship and expect it not to blow up in your face. So you need to know, just like you do your research in a vehicle, what do you want? Are you looking for an SUV, something that you can put a lot of stuff in, something that's safe? You know, you, you should, if you've done your research, you know what kind of oil it takes, how often you need to um, change all and things, same thing. So, I mean, it really depends on the person you're looking for. And you have to remember the Bible says, as a man think of his heart, so is he. In other words, to put it bluntly, trash attracts trash. Treasures attract treasure. So you have to ask yourself the question, do you even like men? And I'm not talking about homosexuality either. Because a lot of women have been trained to look at men to be something, a product, not a person to either, you, to either use or to be afraid of and vice versa. So number one, do you even want to be married? Do you even like the opposite sex? Or are, you, are you only getting married because you like the theory of marriage? So you have to even figure out if you even want to be married. Do you even like the opposite? Again, I'm not talking about homosexuality just so that we're clear. Um, so you have, to, you have to know what it is that you're looking for. Um, and you have to know what it is that you will you will and won't tolerate. To the comment that was made, they're they're uh, dressed up, but what they say is trash. Well, then that's your cue to say ding 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 ding. I mean, you could just end the date right there if you want to. That's a little rude, but that's on you. It's better to not waste his your time and money. But or you can wait until the night's over and just say, you know what, this is not going to work because if someone, in the words of Maya Angelo, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. If a guy says to you. And he says this on multiple occasions because many truths are showing are, are, are spoken in jest. And to the comment that was made, Jarrell, Jarrell made, you know, you can bring up an article so that way it doesn't look like it's about you. If a guy says, you know what, um, I want a sugar mom, and he keeps saying that. Uh, I'm so tired of these women, you know, we have to provide for them. I'm, I'm looking for a woman who owns a house and this and that. And he keeps saying that, or he keeps joking that he has kids that he's not aware that he has. Ding, 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 something should click in your head that maybe this guy has five kids that he's not telling you about that he might not even go around so don't be surprised if you're married five years down the line and this child calls you and says this is my dad i mean technically 
you really shouldn't be surprised not to sound harsh. So you have to do your own research and you have to make sure that you're okay with you because sharks smell blood and they're going to bite. So if, if you're always attracting, it can't always be someone other, another person. If you're always attracting, you know, gigolo men or you're always attracting gold diggers or whatever the case is, you need to see what is it that you're putting out there? What are you putting out there? You know, are you, get, are you, you know, like you have to see, because we all, we all, I mean, I firmly believe everyone needs therapy. Everyone has some kind of mess they came from. Anyone who says they come from a perfect family is lying. But, you know, you, you have to know what it is you want, what it is you're willing to give, what it is you offer and what you're willing to tolerate and not tolerate. And, you know, if you go to, just like you go to a restaurant, you're looking for lasagna, hopefully you're not going to go to Mickey D's and ask them for lasagna. So if there's a certain person that you're looking for, you need to run in those circles. Okay, so I, I love what you said. Thank you so much for sharing that. Faith awesome. preaching. Faith preaching. Yeah, preaching. It's true, though. I do want to, you know, Solomon asked, you know, what women want. Uh, I, I don't believe you're confused about it, but you, it sounds like you've encountered a lot of women that um, may have not been honest about their needs from you, right? And most women want, uh, we want adoration. That is number one. And, and we want affection and we want most importantly security it's men that look for loyalty so for women we want to feel secure and once you create an, a secure environment for us it is so easy for us to be submissive and, and and also be that woman that god has called us to be uh in that moment especially in being your significant other now the comment i made about you know dating most people i wasn't talking in the aspect of sex per se, I was speaking on the aspect of, okay, you can go on like a date, like we're going to stop work. So we're going to go have lunch because you have to, you have yeah. to, you should, you have to do your research and you also have to know how to vet. I, and you know what Faith said is true. Like putting certain things out there will attract a certain type of demographic of man. Cause uh, case in point, I love to travel. I like, everyone knows I like travel. I like to bounce around. I love life. I like to just enjoy my life, but they call me the entertainment queen. I, I love entertainment. So, and that's what I was putting out on my social media. So I started attracting certain guys. I'm like, well, none of these guys are correct. Like, what, is it me? And then, you know, and then I was like, okay, well, maybe I need to reevaluate my life. I started talking to, talking to my friends. So like, well, maybe you shouldn't post this and post that. And I was like, well, why do I feel like I have to diminish myself or belittle myself to appease the man? But he, you know, when a man looks on my profile, he might, okay, well, she she's living the life. She's always traveling. Maybe she has a sponsor or this and that. And I'm like, no, I don't. Like, I, I'm really paying for all this on my own. So we have to be mindful about what we put out there and, you know, how we carry ourselves and things of that nature. So I won't go on and on, but yes, thank you. And then I also believe birds of feather flock together. So it's part of the research part to like cut things short so you're not wasting time is who do they hang around with? What do mm -hmm. they hang around with? You can ask them basic question, like on job interviews. I remember being asked one time, uh, what's the past three books you've read in the, in, in the past year? And you can't say the Bible. And if they don't know or they have a then clearly you know you're not dealing with someone who's a scholar so if you're a scholar leave or you know you can ask them questions one guy asked me this and i'm ever so grateful because he taught me something and i was i was a kid at the time he said we were dating or we went on a date and he said if you could do anything in the world what would you do so i answered and i said why'd you ask that he says that's the quickest and easiest way to sum up somebody and you can even use it on jobs it's not just dating friends family whatever to see what it is they're about because if their answer is all about oh you know i, I would buy a big house this and then they say nothing about helping their family nothing about starting a business mm -hmm. nothing about paying off their bills nothing then you know you're dealing with a shark now if you want a shark who's all about that, that's fine i'm not saying anyone's good or bad that's between them and god but just know what you're getting into or if someone you know is all about oh helping other people you know dealing with a whale so now you know that this person might be okay they're helpful but they might put themselves in a situation to take advantage of. So you have to know what, what you're dealing with. Um, so, I mean, the quickest and easiest way to, to, to know what someone's about is to look at how they spend their money and know you don't need to ask them how much they make or some watch, watch, you know, <laughs> um, if, if they're always, you know, taking out the credit card to take you to fancy restaurants and they have fancy home, uh, excuse me, a fancy car, but they can't bring you home or they're in, they're in an apartment or they're living with their parents. Ding, 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 ding. Something should go on that this person's probably in debt. And even if they make $500,000 a year, if they're $700,000 in debt, they're broke. So because like you said, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. If someone makes 40,000, but bills are paid and paid on time, that's someone who's a rich person. You know, these are things you need to, you need to be aware of. And again, this goes back to self-awareness because trash attracts trash. If you don't know up from down your own self, how do you expect someone else to? 
on the way. But you don't want him to take you home too soon because then that means he's low effort and he's not being intentional about really courting you and dating you. No, nobody's saying it's about sex. I didn't say that. I didn't say it. No, no, no. I'm not talking about, no, no, you missed it. I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about you don't want him to take you home too soon. Like, let's say the first date, he wants to cook you a home, like, he wants to cook you a dinner and show off his cooking skills, but he wants to bring you home. That's a red flag right there. Um, you don't want him to do that. He should put in the effort to take you out and spend some money. I wasn't on even you. talking about that. No, I'm just bringing it. I'm bringing it back. Does he own the house? Have you seen it? That's all I'm asking. What is That's your address? Fine. Google it on Google on Google Maps. And if it is a little apartment, or if if it's some rundown place, but he's driving a Ferrari. That's a problem. So what is your address? And if he can't give you your address, what are you hiding? Are you married with five kids and, and, and you're, you're posing a single? You know, it's a, this is information age. You don't even need to go to this person's house. You keep bringing up these five kids, Faith. I'm trying <laughs> I'm sorry, we're done. What I want to pinpoint out here is I think we are all looking for the same thing quality of men. Okay. And the quality of men does not necessarily mean, of course, the, the guy has to be very rich, like, you know, uh, Faith, you have defined it. But I think character also plays a role here. And, and to answer Solomon's question, I think that most of the women on this platform, if I can speak for all of them, we are all hardworking. So our list, we're looking for a very long list with men. Yes, we get it. But our list, I, I can speak for us. We are very hardworking, very sincere and honest and willing to put in the work to make the relationship work. We are not quitters. We fight for what we believe in. If we can get half of this from the men, I think that we don't have a problem. And we, we, we're willing to sit and talk about the relationship. And I'm also coming from, you know, I'm divorced. So we coming from the angle of, you meet a partner who is unable to sit and discuss issues with you. To the, the tribe I come from, it's very frustrating. And for me, I would lose respect within a second. If I keep coming to you as a man, trying to talk to you about the problem, maybe you've seen it, maybe you don't have the capability of trying to solve it, no problem. I'll still bring it to you so we can talk about it together. And if you're still incapable of trying to address the situation, which is all part of the quality of a man that we're looking for, then it's, then who are you? But then listen, um, Mr. Gerald, you've already married this guy. You didn't see these traits in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, gave, you gave it time to do whatever the courtship, you gave it time, but he just can't handle a situation or to solve a problem. And so the woman becomes the man. That does happen. That does happen. Um, so I, I'll say this, and I don't want to say that this just is the truth all the time, but I, I think that um, issues centered around conflict resolution and things mm -hmm. like that, I usually see that as trauma. There's something there. Um, and so that and so 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 here's a great question you can also ask you can add this to your list uh val add this to your list the question is have you ever thought about why you do the things that you do because a lot of times if someone's doing something we don't like it's like why do you do that or i hate when you do that or i don't like when you do that and, you know regardless of how you say it you, those are still the words you say right it's like you know, it's, it's like not reprimanding, but it's just showing um, that you just dislike what's going on. But when you come to them like, have you ever thought about why? Then that that is more of a, hey, let's let's figure this out together. Because if you ask this man that you were married to, if you ask him, hey, do you like it when you're not able to do this? He would obviously be like, no, I don't like it. So then the next question is, well, let's figure out why you're doing it. And I and, and and I'll use a personal example. You know, I um, you know, I, I I use a personal example. So, you know, my wife and I got together. I was very uh, my conflict resolution skills were not that good. Okay, they just they just weren't that good. Um, more specifically, when we would get into like a disagreement or whatever, I would just kind of shrink. I would I just wouldn't say much, right? And I think that's a that's a very common issue. I think women face with men is that we just kind of, you know, we don't really have much to say. We just kind of sit there, 
right? So I finally asked myself, I said, why, why am I like this? Why do I do this? I never asked myself that question. And I actually found out why. And that for me was a turning point. I'm so much better now. And uh, what I found out though, is that it was when my father passed when I was 12. And I remember a situation basically when he passed and one of my, uh, he, he, he had a situation at church when he was at the hospital and my aunt took me to see him and we were standing outside his door and you know, they have like the window or whatever, you can look into the room. And she asked me, she said, Hey, do you want to go in and, and, you know, see your dad, he was unconscious. And I remember I looked in and I saw him and I just remember I felt numb. I was, I felt like frozen, like unable to do anything. And I really realized like, you know what, that was, that was when I taught myself how to shut down when I'm faced with a situation that I don't, I don't know what to do. And so almost like magic, once I saw that, I realized, uh, and this is something I tell everybody, let's say the word is shy. You aren't shy, you are shy because blank. And your job is to find the blank. You find the moment, the thing that happened, right? People aren't born shy. People aren't born with anger issues, right? But you bring on these characteristics by what you've gone through, usually in the form of trauma. Um, and I know that's a long-winded answer, but tr listen, trauma is real. And that's why I put it number one on the big six, because you'll, you know, when I, when I finally worked on this, this was 20 years after my father passed, you know, so two decades and I'm finally now really connecting those dots. And now if you ask my wife, oh, we can resolve some conflict, you know, let's, <laughs> let's talk about it, you know, but, but in a good way, right. I can say how I feel. I can look for, I can, you know, solve the problem. I can have the dialogue and I don't, I don't feel that numbness, you know, anymore. So, um, so yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, but instead of trying to try to compensate for what uh, your man might be lacking, the first step is find out why he's doing it, but not like a, why are you doing it? More like a, have you ever thought about it? And let's figure it out together. And I, and I, and I think if you do that, men, men will feel a little more comfortable saying, you know what? There was that one time that blank happened and blank happened and then you can move forward. So. Okay. So, I mean, that, that was very interesting, but also it also depends on the how. I think the word the how is something that I personally tend to ask myself as how you say it. So if, let's say fast forward. That's true. You've met, you've met a guy you're dating, things are going well. And, you know, for whatever the reason is, you know, through a conflict, you ask him, hey, have you ever thought of why you do what you do? It's how you say it can determine what the answer is going to be. If you say in the condescending, belittle yeah. him, make him feel less of a man, or, you, you know, you say, but then you throw in little jabs, forget it. It's going to turn into yeah. a whole blown argument, which is going to lead yeah. to something that both of you will regret. Would you agree? A thousand percent, a thousand and one percent. Um, I do agree. It's, you know, uh, there's another thing I often say, is, and the question is, and this is another, um, maybe uh, not a question to ask Val, but just something to be aware of. And it is, can the person I'm with communicate to me that they're upset or that they're, you know, hurt without like insulting me or, you know what I mean? Instead of without attacking me, right? Are they able to say, hey, what you did hurt me without them like coming for me, you know? Um, so that's important too, but I do agree. Um, and, you know, you know, my wife, she'll tell you just the other day, she was dealing with something and I was just, you know, hey, why do you think you do that? You know, almost like you're just being inquisitive, right? You're not challenging them. You're not like even, you're not making them feel like they've done anything wrong. 
you're just like, hey, wh why do you think you do that? Or, or better yet, when, when was the first time that happened to you? And boom, just in like a five minute conversation, we quickly were like, you know, we were talking and she revealed some information. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, that's probably, you know what I mean? So uh, to Solomon's point, yes, if we, we can have those conversations from a, a position of just really wanting to solve the problem. And like you said, that word jab, man, you, you know, without taking those jabs, uh, then yes, that is how men will open up. We don't, we don't mind opening up, but we will not open up if we feel like you're challenging us, right? It, we, we, we don't, we, we won't do it. If, if we feel like we're being challenged, we'll be like, eh, whatever, you know, <laughs> basically. That's true. And I think yeah, as yesterday was the first time I had something you know, or something where, you know, and I think to me, I've said to myself that if, and I use the word a big time, if I were to go through that route or whether it's a relationship or whatever it is, I, I came to my senses that we men don't really understand women. Mm. We really don't. Mm. That's deep. We truly, truly don't. And then, I, and then yesterday, I was listening to the, um, this pastor guy and then uh, like a, 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 from a church. And he made some, you know, some analysis where he said, hold on, who best can understand a woman than the creator himself? <laughs> right? Just think about it for a second. Who, okay, just think about it. Who ate the apple first? Eve, right? When, when God came to ask, who did he blame? The man. Okay? Yeah. But the question is, because we don't understand women, it becomes very frustrating. So I personally, I've, I've, been saying, I've said myself that the only way you could come to understand these people is to seek wisdom from above. Well, I don't know who's a believer on this line, whether you're a believer or not believer, put it to practice and you see what I'm trying to say. You seek wisdom from above. Why? Because women, I don't think that they are that complicated in the sense that if you give a woman a child, they will raise that child, they build homes. Like, there's so many pluses. However, if you give her a wahala, she'll bring Satan to your doorstep. <laughs> Right, and that that alone is <laughs> just put chills through my spine. So then, wouldn't it make sense to try and reason? One of the things I learned from my well, yet to, yet to be my ex, or you know, was that when we usually have an argument, let's say through how let's say it started on Monday, we're all rushing out to go to work. Everyone is busy, stressed out to their mind. The only time we shoot. Even then, she, let's say it was me. I'm the one that just lost my cool and then I just went, I went off for whatever the reasons may be. Friday night into Saturday morning when we've got up and we're lying down there, we're not in a rush, she'll bring the topic up. she said, oh, you know the thing that we were just talking that you, you got angry? This is what I meant. At that time, how it gets said or what she said, you realize, oh, hold on, why did I get angry? Right? You just, you calm down and you apologize and then you listen to what she's saying. So I have taken that on board and other stuff that I have learned from other people. And I think we as we guys, if all of us were to sort of like pause, listen to what they have to say. We're, I'm not saying that everything they're saying is true and neither, neither am I saying that everything that we guys say is, you know, should be taken into account. But at least give her that listening ear that you know that she's been heard and then put it to practice. Just not listen and then put it away. Listen. Yeah. So I just want to add that on to those who are potentially looking to get married or would want to get married. That from a guy perspective, seek wisdom above so that you can understand that woman that you're going to marry. It's not all about the bedroom activities. Those just are pluses. That's not a real deal. Can you communicate? Can you have a conversation? Can you laugh? You know, oh, everything that I think one of the ladies said, everything that comes with it, the support, the security, the fun, and so on and so forth is very important. But then my last question I would want to pose these ladies is that if the guy is the provider or providing to the majority, not to say the woman doesn't, they do as well. And then one day, things turn, the table turns. He loses his job or whatever the case is. 
Would you, the woman, be willing to hold the fort until he recovers? Less than two years, yeah. <laughs> Say it again. I'm sorry. Face putting timelines on it. <laughs> I'm saying as long as it's less than three years, the man who refuses to work for three consecutive years, you're out of here. Okay, so if that table turned and it was you and he said that to you, would that be okay? Absolutely. I would love it. I actually like to work. No, no, no. It'd be real. I mean, we're, we're all I being real here. Real. I, I, I remember okay. I lost my job after three weeks, you know? So it was like, just sit down and, and enjoy the unemployment. I said, I'm half Jamaican. We don't do that. That's called laziness. Okay. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> so, you see, the reason why the reason why I brought this question up is that look at look at this. The last two years, so many people have lost their jobs. We 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 read it on social me media and so many things. So many families have been broken, all because of some of these stuff we're talking about, or even worse ones. You are saying to me that if the table turns and you are not working because it's very difficult to find a job, and the guy turns around and says, "You know what? You're out of here." You'll be okay to accept that. I've never been in that situation because I was taught you need to, okay, you're supposed to be an asset to your spouse, even if you're a woman, not an ass. So you're supposed to come debt free with your own stuff. So if the guy said you're out of here, I would have a place to go because I would have my own. I'm a very firm believer. I'm shocked, disgusted, and appalled by the body of Christ and this legalized prostitution where they will. You'll have a lot of parents who claim to be Christians with convenient amnesia that says housing and riches are from fathers, a prudent wife is from the Lord. They won't help their child out, male or female, regardless of race, because white people do it too. They won't help their child get a job. They won't help their child pay for tuition. They won't help their child buy a house. But magically, they claim they don't have money. Magically, they'll help you pay for a wedding I mean, that's just crazy to me. They'll help you pay for a wedding, but they won't help you with anything else financial. And then you get mad as a parent when your child's marriage blows up in their face, you get what you deserve. So let me reiterate what, what Solomon is saying, uh, Miss Faith, as if COVID, those who lost their jobs due to- Okay, yeah, unforeseen. I think that's where he might be coming from. I don't know. So those who lost their jobs during COVID, and your husband or your wife comes and makes such insensitive statement, how would you take it due to COVID? Yeah. That's different. I specifically okay. said three consecutive years. COVID but did not happen for three consecutive years. I spoke very clear with that. It's a hypothetical question, madam. Yeah, it's a hypothetical so, question. She didn't, so, have the, she didn't understand the comment I made. Okay, so like, you know, and the COVID was an unforeseen circumstance. A lot of people were affected. So that's why he's Yeah, so economically by their job. So I totally understand where, you know, what Solomon, what Solomon was saying. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people were actually forced into such positions uh, during COVID and are slowly coming out of it. So I think as the woman and as the man of the household, um, it's important for both of us to have some type of provision, right? If we, and I'm not trying to, you know, make this a Bible study, but if we look at the Bible, you know, the, you have the Proverbs 31 woman and you also have, you know, the working women like Ruth and other wives too, that were very smart and made sure that there was store, Abigail, the store, they had a storeroom with provision. So, so there is, um, so, so to be quiet while you finish it. Yeah, thank you, Faith. I'm trying to talk. Sorry, like, sorry, guys. Um, so having a storeroom, having provision is very important. And, you know, at times we are going to fall on high times. I was taught that you want to at least have six months of your a current salary saved up just in case for a rainy day. And then we also have provisions like your 401k, uh, retirement plans and other saving plans that you can possibly lean on during a financial hardship. I think we should always have some type of provision. And, you know, uh, when you get married, it's for, you know, till death do you guys part. So it's never going to be easy. And if that's your wife and she's down for you, she knows you have the intent and not just the uh, 
the thought of working, you're actively trying to look for work while she's supporting you. That is different. It's different if the man is just, you know, lying around being lazy. He's not actively looking for work. He's just going to ride it out and let the wife just keep working two or three jobs to pay all the bills. That is completely different. But in Solomon's point, it sounds like, you know, the man is active. He got hit. It's, un, you know, it's unforeseen. And he's actively looking, trying to get back on his feet. But for the next nine to eight months, the wife may have to hold down the fort. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so if I was a so, wife, so, yeah. So, 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 so Bella, I know, I know a lot of people want to say that. What I'm, saying, what I'm, what I'm trying to say that the, the example I gave, like I was saying, I gave was not just like a scenario, but given the two years that most people have lost a job, and even post two years, still some individuals, people can't find jobs. But what I'm, the other thing is that in marriage or in any relationship, whether it's marriage, mm -hmm. the the unforeseeable events that the, 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 when you're not expecting, that is when the test of time kicks in. The, the trial of the marriage or the relationship goes through a, a, a period where it tests every party's temperament. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. right. Because, because, you know, everything I was saying is like a role play event, but in the crunch of crunch, when everything, you know, you're going through your own issue, he's going through his own issue, extended family, moms, dads, you, you name it. So many things are happening that is when the question we ask ourselves is that when the going gets tough, do you get going or you crumble? Mm. Right. And that is how I'm viewing so many things, especially if I ever go into any time, you know, I'm not going to wait till the perfect picture comes in and say, you know, this is what I do because that's too much of a rehearsal issue. But in the real situation, when scenarios happen, mm -hmm. what do you do? You know, and those who are dating, you could put that into practice. You could deliberately create a scenario that would come across as a real event. And then you use, you will see how things happen. If the guy is clever, he can also do the same. But if he's not clever, you just put yourself in that position and then see how would he react? Let's say if you were the woman or the guy, whichever, how would he react? Mm -hmm. That will give you an indication that, you know what? If we were to ever hit a roadblock, Mm -hmm. I am 100% sure that this husband of mine or this wife of mine mm -hmm. is going to be a solid rock that I can depend on. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was my two cents. Well said, well said. Yeah, thank you. I think Thelma uh, wanted to make a comment. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, JT. I wanted to hear from the Pastor Thelma, if you can unmute and give your comment. If not, no worries. I'm, I'm, I'm just listening. Um, <laughs> that's all. I'm just listening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll read you. Okay. Oh, I saw you dropped, you dropped oh. it in the chat. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, my, my, um, and please excuse me because I did kind of get dropped off the call. So if this is redundant, y'all could let me know, but I, I kind of was a little, um, concerned. I was, cause I felt like I was hearing like generalization, I understand, you know, men, you know, have a certain way and women may have a certain way, but we're also individuals. And I think that, um, you know, not all men are, you know, respond whatever way. That's some of the things I've heard and not all women, because we all at the same time come from different um, stories and backgrounds. So uh, that, that was all I was just kind of, um, bring it up to Bella is um, what about the generalization? Because if you're getting to know someone personally, uh, some of those attributes, you know, like, you know, there are men who are open. It, ju it just, it, it depends on their maturity, you know, and if they've um, worked, um, had some work on themselves. And the only thing I wanted to talk, um, ask Mr. A true love is in all this, my um, my little two cents too is that I think we also fail to basically work on ourselves. You know, when we take a minute and we just work on ourselves and that is a key part of even being a believer is just, you know, working on yourself. Um, I've taken time to go to counseling and just, you know, just deal with me, you know, and so you then if you know yourself, you know, 
okay, I used to have rejection. This is my trigger points, A, B, C, D. I think that also helps you with choosing a partner, you know, um, and I, that's what I would just say, because I, I do come from a background that my first marriage, I was divorced. And within the um, four years before I married again, I actually did a lot more self-work. You know, I didn't necessarily look at the other party. I did a lot of work with um, myself, making sure um, going before the Lord dealing with some spiritual things and then dealing with what I need to in the natural as far as going to counseling. I had I was really blessed to have a shepherding mother and also just good mentorship where they, you know, hey Thelma, we see this, this and that. And when I was able to work on myself and then I have, you know, self-fulfillment, just dealt with all the things I need to. Then what I noticed is I attracted somebody who was also healthy so some of the things some of the things that um I apologize some of the things that um we're saying even in selecting a spouse is you know there's that saying that says um hurt people hurt others you know and the fact that I was just in a much more healthier space both spiritually and also um in the in the natural then I attracted somebody who too was also more healthier. Did, does that make sense? Because ma- a mature person also attracts the mature person, you know? So that's all I just have to say. I don't want to be long-winded. And if you, were, if you don't mind, like I shared uh, Mr. True Love about, you know, like some of the generalization, because a mature man, a man who's taking time to deal with himself, gone before the Lord dealt with, psychological triggers dealt with uh, family of origin, all the things you're talking about, family of origin issues, those type of men, they're not in that same space to deal with that junk. They're able to, you're able to, you know, communicate and work things out. They're able to walk because they're they're, they're affirmed in their um, identity, both spiritually and as a man. So I'm going to get off. I'm not going to (laughs) continue. Thank you. Thank no, you, Delma, Pastor Delma. Oh, yeah, that was great. That was great. Thank I enjoyed you so that. Much. We appreciate every thought and every word you've spoken. Thank you. Um, did Miss Rebecca, did you have your hand up at some point? Yes. Hi, everyone. I did. Sorry, I'm slightly under the weather today, so okay. I decided to come off camera. Um, but yes, first of all, everyone's made such incredible points. Um, and even to the point of Pastor Felma talking about you know doing the work um and I know my my husband hasn't shared it yet um but that is something that is so important and that is something that um he did as well as I doing that work on yourself because it's almost in a way actually going back to a point that Faith made earlier which is you know you have to look at yourself and say okay who am I because what what am I is what I'm going to attract and if I don't like it then that's also a reflection of me so I do a hundred percent stand by doing that work and it's not enough just to say oh you know I know I do this and I got to work on it but actively you know not being passive actively working out you know those issues actively every day saying okay I need to change because if I can change me then I can predict a better future for me and and you're going to be a better person for someone else so I agree with that. Um, there was a point that um, Joel made earlier as well, and I wanted to highlight it, where he said that, you know, if men feel that they're being challenged, then they're not dealing with it. And I just wanted to add a little tidbit, and, and maybe, Joel, you can correct me, babe, is, you know, it's not necessarily that men don't necessarily like to be challenged, because challenge can be a good thing. It's more so about the delivery, because if a man feels attacked, that is where I normally see that, you know, that's where the communication issue can really, uh, you know, there can be like a miscommunication because it's like the delivery, if it comes out as an attack rather than like a constructive challenge, if that makes sense, that is where there could be a problem. And I know that that's something that him and I 
had to work through transparently um, because my delivery wasn't always, um, you know, as, as polished and as professional as my voice might sound. It wasn't like that. So I had to take some time and really think about how am I communicating? Because if he's not receiving it, then I need to think to myself, how am I delivering it? So those are my tidbits, but everyone's got some great points and I'm loving the conversation. Um, Ms. Trulove, just out of interest, are you from London? Yes, I am, but I'm, I'm here in Austin, Texas. So where, where am I in London, south or west or east or north? I am an East Londoner, through and through. <laughs> okay, okay. Just wanted to know because I thought, you know, it was refreshing to hear something. All right, thank you. <laughs> yes, I, I wanted to say it as well, Solomon, when I heard you speaking, but I didn't want to jump in, but it's so great to hear another accent on the call. Yeah, I'm from South London. Oh, I love it. <laughs> nice to virtually meet you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, we know that Miss True Love has to leave in the moment, but we had Miss Bella's um, collected a ton of questions. We didn't even get into sex. We didn't get into marriage. We didn't get into physical abuse. We didn't get into verbal abuse. We didn't get to a whole lot, but your time is limited. But I just want Miss Bella to go ahead and ask the questions that we sent ahead of time whilst we're on the platform to answer it for us. So Ms. Bella, shoot. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We need a part two and probably a part three and part four. Yes. Part we'll take five. That's so fine. The half is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll start off with the first question. Um, what red flags cause a man not to marry? his current girlfriend. So a girlfriend that he's currently dating. Um, mm. What red flags will turn him on off? And I guess you and, you know, Solomon can. Solomon. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, I'll give, I'll give two. And then uh, uh, Solomon, you can chime in and add to that or, or add more. Um, but I mean, it's very cliche, but it's very true. It is peace. But I will, I will qualify that as well. And I was thinking about this the other day and I was writing about it. Peace is a blanket term, but what specifically does peace look like to a man? Because peace is different for men and women, right? Uh, peace for men, in a nutshell, is the absence of unnecessary problems or disagreements. Again, disagreements are going to happen, but we don't want unnecessary, unproductive disagreements or problems or issues that take away from our peace. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that, you know, that sounds simple, but it is big for us. We really do enjoy peace and we really do enjoy just getting to the heart of something, solving it and moving on. Um, so the second thing, and, and I think specifically in the question, it said girlfriend, it said yeah, something that girlfriend, so maybe not even a girlfriend, maybe someone that you went on a date with or uh, somebody that you probably, you know, are engaged to. Then you started seeing, you know, red flags, you know, red flags. There's another conversation for another day, but red flags do come up after you propose. So, yes. Yeah. Um, so I'll go the uh, I'll go a different route and I'll say a big red flag is a woman that does not admit when she is wrong. <laughs> oh my goodness that that that's in the discussion if a woman cannot admit when she is wrong mm -hmm. then that communicates so much about how she may act when you're raising your children how she may act when it comes to making big financial decisions spending money saving money and at the end of the day it takes peace away from us and it makes us feel like we're being challenged. Mm -hmm. okay. It makes us feel like, and you know, whatever term makes you feel better, whether it's instructions or guidance or coachable, you know, direction, whatever word you want to use. But yes, a man, uh, even at a smaller degree, we do want to feel like, hey, you know, can you do this for me? Or, or, or you know, it, it just not admitting when you're wrong speaks to so many issues um down the road and so it's and, and so and that is another thing that will make a man not want to talk to you because he sees you as a walking argument mm -hmm. or a walking deflection mm -hmm. right or even on a deeper level he sees you as 
another problem that isn't going to get solved. <laughs> and that will make it. And, and the harsh reality is that he will stick around and he may even have kids with you and you may live together, but he will not put a ring on your finger because he does not see the long term as peace. Mm-hmm. And I'll let you take it from there, Solomon. Wow. Well, I, I, I fully agree. I fully agree. I mean, I think to, I think your question was why does why is it that men basically, I guess, does not commit to marry their girlfriends or whatever? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Was- yeah. And again, it goes back. It goes down to <laughs> everything that he said is absolutely correct, and possibly could also be that the constant nag because you know women are dealing with biological clock issues a guy is possibly also maybe that person is trying to find who they are to start with maybe or they have this aspiration goal that they feel that they need to reach right but by to me making that commitment would help because here comes another helper here comes a person that you believe to be the love of your life and it's just a matter of you saying I do and then go into the aisle and do whatever you need to do. But the guy is not doing because maybe the woman has constantly been asking him that question that he's got to the stage he's thinking like, what's the rush? All right. So the nagging, you know, guys need we, we, like we need to do things our way, free way. And I think when we do it, we try to put the icing on the cake. But when we're nag or pressurize, it ruins the whole fun, in my opinion. Yeah, that's true. uh, To add to that, we don't want to be forced to do something. We want to be inspired to do something. And if we feel inspired or incentivized, then we'll do it. But if you, you know, if we feel whatever and we're like, "Eh, I'll do it when I want to. And then it turns into that whole thing. So that's the last thing I want to add. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you guys. That was so, so good. Um, The next question is, what are men attracted to Mm. um so i will say that on a physical level men have a range right Mm -hmm. um and i think that when excluding men who are like mega rich because they're 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 they might not have a range they might have a type but i think the average guy we have a range, right? Oh. You don't have to be one size. You you just need to fit in within a couple of sizes, right? Some men might want, you know, a six to a 10. Some men might want an eight to a 14, but we have a range. Mm-hmm. Um, that is personal preference. That's man to man. But at the end of the day, we want to kind of look at you and feel like this woman represents me. Okay. And, we, and so, you know, Again, we don't want women to feel like we ha- we're we controlling what they do, but I will say that if you dress a certain way or you talk a certain way or you look a certain way, then just, just you need to be okay with the fact that you may be disqualifying yourself from certain men. Um, and so without diving deeper, I'll leave it at that. Now on like a personal level, what are men attracted to? Men are attracted to women and let me know if you agree solomon we want we're attracted to women that that have something to teach us Mm -hmm. right we we do want to learn now some people might take that as like you know like needing to like take her advice or help but that may or may not be true but at the end of the day i you know we're attracted to a woman that says man i can learn something from her she, she adds value to my life. She's an asset. If I'm doing this, she can actually give me suggestions or whatever that can help me course correct or take what I'm doing and double it or triple it. Right. You know, we don't, um, you know, and if you want to say it a different way, we want an active participant in wherever we're going. We, you know, if we're in a boat, we don't want to be at the front with the captain's hat and you're on the back sunbathing. We want you to be sitting next to us saying you turned it wrong you know you you know we want you to be with us adding value and helping us get there and not just kind of passively uh enjoying a relationship with us um if that makes sense 
And and I think another thing because that I want to add on is from a for again from, from a guy perspective, and I'm flipping it from a Christian point. You would want a prayerful woman that will help you grow. Why am I saying that? Whether you believe it or not, there are forces out there that are attacking from every angle. So because I, mean, I say the woman, because the woman is the one that builds the home. The woman is the foundation to the structure to which you're living in. And when I say the structure, not the physical structure, but the relationship, okay? So yes, we need that. We need a woman that is supportive, a woman that would encourage just as much as you are expecting. Remember, that's why I asked the first question that when, when, I, when I, you guys asked me, I said, what do you women want? If you are able to reconcile what you want, then when you find a guy, you may not get all of it and the guy may not get all of it, but at least more than 60, 70% you get. Then really 30 to 40, you can work it out as you go along. But if you don't know what you want, but then you have a long list of stuff, then, it, then basically you're setting yourself to fail and then you're just put on necessary pressure on somebody's son. <laughs> Okay. So somebody who's very prayerful, somebody who's very encouraging, somebody who, you know, who understands you when, when, the, when the man is wrong, you would tell him. And again, the how, how you say it makes a difference. And again, him too, how he says it to you makes a difference. The how, it's not the what, the how, how you say it. Oh. Mistakes happen. How do you address it? Do you stand in the public and insult her? Do you, you know, throw in jabs just to piss her off or piss him off? You're not going to get anywhere. Mm-hmm. Agree. That would be the recipe for failure and you're chipping away slowly. It's a sinking ship. Mm, that's true. Wow. Very awesome points, guys. Y'all are making like really great points. Thank you so much. Uh, I have so many questions. I hope I can get through all of them. I know JT, you have to drop it up at 8.30, um, but we'll most likely will continue. So feel free to stay if you can. If you're not, if you can, yeah. I totally understand. Um, and so I'll ask one more question before um, I do a pause and then release. Um, what is a masculine woman to a man? It's a two-part question. And what are key components that men witness in such women that trigger red flags. And the reason this, came, this question came up is because uh, I think uh, the gender roles over the years have kind of shifted. So um, a lot of women have become head of households and there are a lot of guys that are not head of households anymore. The, you know, the roles have been reversed. And I think inadvertently it's caused a lot of women to become more masculine in how they talk, in their gestures, um, and how they interact with people and, and and how they handle situations. And I know this is a common th- topic on social media, yeah. YouTube, everywhere, the modern day masculine women. And I know it's a major turn off for men. So I really, we really want to hear from you. Like, what are those triggers? What are those things that you guys notice that makes a woman masculine? And, and you know, as women, what can we do to um, better that? So if you guys can please answer that. We'll love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean this this is this is a deep question. Um, loaded. <laughs> it's, it's loaded. It's loaded. I would say I'm gonna take a step back. What I will say is that I heard something that uh, maybe a few months ago, and as I as I thought about, it, I said, you know what? That I think that's it. So um, I was watching some content, and a gentleman said that women use their jobs and their incomes and uh to and they use it to give themselves veto power over what the man says or wants and so even though most women if you ask them they'll say they want that protector provider the masculine the leader right but yet when they get him just because maybe they're at their job calling shots and not even calling shots, just creating their own income. I'm not sure why, but I believe that a lot of women think, okay, since he's not protecting and providing a hundred percent, then he doesn't get a hundred percent of the say, or even most of the say. 
Um, and, you know, we've seen videos of it. So I don't mean to uh, kind of repeat myself, but it really is the woman who won't admit when she's wrong uh, or won't take direction or won't take advice um, or who has trouble, you know, with conflict resolution. And, and, and I think that, well, you know what? So I'll give you a specific point. You know, let me say it, it, it really hurts when women will take those jabs at men and it's usually they go straight to money, usually. Um, and that communicates to a man, you know what? So it, it, as soon as you make a dollar more than I do a year, all of a sudden <laughs> I, I don't, I'm worthless to you. I don't matter. Um, and, and so um, I feel like I'm getting a little off topic here, but so the original, I'm sorry, <laughs> it was the, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, it was the masculine traits. It was that kind of feeling like they can challenge a man and they use that job as the basis for why they can and should. And so you'll, what I, what I think you'll see is like more arguments, yeah. more disagreements and more of the unwillingness to admit when you're wrong um that's kind of that's like a, a quick answer um anything to add to that Solomon yeah I think I think you're absolutely correct I know that you know the, the masculine is it, it it varies depending on the definition of you know, masculinity in the sense that if and I think you were saying it and you said you were going off topic but I don't think you were you, that was the case if a woman begins to become, let's say, the high earner. And all of a sudden, she thinks that she wears the pants. That's a big deal. Because a man always, not demand, a man is expecting that due, uh, what's the word, that dignity and that respect as a man, as he being the man to be given. Irrespect, whether he's broke, whether whatever it is, just give him that due respect. If, if you take that away, Forget it. Is is there's nothing you would do that that person the, the, the love or whatever plans that he had for you would come back. Yeah, it will take a long way. Just like how you guys, when we do something wrong, whether we cheat or whatever it is, you guys kind of bottle that information inside you for years to come. Now just flip it the other way around. When you take his respect. Yeah, very true. All right, ladies, food for thought. <laughs> Miss Bella, not to cut you in, but we have Nini from Ghana um, who joined us as well. Um, hey. And he's also a male, and maybe he can give us a man's perspective after a while. So, hi, Nini. Thank you for joining. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Okay. So can I proceed or should I ask for more before I let you go, JT? Yeah, let's do one or two more. That's fine. Okay, thank you. All right. So next question is, do men really like women of the BBL culture? Wait, what is BBL? I've told yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, BB, a BBL is a Brazilian butt lift. So, you know, a woman that, goes, I mean, let's just keep it 100. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of women and look, look okay. So I'll just keep it all the way. I'll keep it 1000. Keep it. So I have male friends that I married. I grew up with, I were cool. And they told me, you know, after their wives had babies or whatever like that, they were like, listen, I told my wife, I have a budget. If you want to get, you know, a BBL or mommy makeover, a mommy makeover is, you know, you get the whole liposuction, the, the fat transfer to, you know, your rear end, your rear end. Uh, you get a, a boob lift or implants or whatever like that. You get a whole mommy makeover. And they said they have a budget for their wives so they can get a mommy makeover so they don't have to look at other women and be tempted or cheat. So, and then you see a lot of men that go after women that are, you know, are surgically enhanced. So it's like, you know, the natural chicks, the ones that don't have any, such, I'm not opposed to surgical enhancements. I'm just asking because this is the day and age we're living in right now. Right. So, and it's all, if you go on social media, it's all over social media. A lot of women are, you know, 
are kind of not wearing anything now. Like everything is readily available. So this is a real question to ask. Like, are men really into women that are, you know, that have gotten a butt lift or um, have gotten surgical enhancements or do they just want to sleep with them? Is it just a thrill? Like, do you take these women seriously? So, question. Uh, so, okay. oh, yep, you got it. Uh, no, 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 I'll, I'll leave you to the seniors and we work our way down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll answer very quickly. Um, I heard a quote a couple of weeks ago or months ago. It's perfect. Men want a woman that looks like a good life, not a good night. Ah, and it. when women walk around like this, yes, they get all the likes and their Instagram, whatever. Yeah. But those women do not get the ring. I'm sorry. Yeah. So maybe a small percentage of them do, but for the vast majority of them are single and they will stay single and they will eventually just end up in some struggle love situation somewhere. But no, those, those women on, at scale, they, they don't get the ring. They don't. They just, there's nothing else to say about it. Go ahead, Solomon. <laughs> so, so to me, I mean, you need to ask your question. When you first met your wife, your girlfriend, right? This is a guy's point of view. What mm -hmm. attracted you to that person? Was it her personality? Was it her booty? Is it her chest? What is it? Face, eyes? Something, there must be something that attracted you, the way she dressed. But you see, when the moment you, you get married, this is both sides. We, the men, or the, actually the women, as, as a matter of fact, tend to let themselves go. You come home, they still probably got a scarf, especially our black women, they still got a scarf that they had from, you know, from in the way they were to bed or whatever it is. It's like, there's no appealing that you make the guy turn. I'm, I'm coming, let me, let me land and then you guys can just attack. Give me a sec, all right? So what, 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 what am I saying that? Again, the same scriptures, women beautify themselves, beautify themselves. So that when the man sees, you know, sees them, it's like the jaw drops all the time. Is it, is it sustainable? Maybe not. But at least most of the time you should be seen doing that. If you do that, why would any man, regardless whether you've had babies or whatever, he is not going to look at any other person, regardless of whether they got a Brazilian butt or whatever it may be. They're not. They will not do it. And the other thing is, the reason why other guys will want to see others in, again, the excuses, you know, when it comes to the intimate side, the excuses is way too much. I'm tired. I'm this. I'm that. You're forever tired. At what point in time are you going to get any energy? So, I'll, I'll, leave, it to, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave it to Honorable Nee if he's got any addition to add on. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, they're here. Uh, Hi, everybody. Hi. Hey. Uh, uh, I think I, I've got a few, a few um, stuff to add. Um, I'll say, uh, the connection. Yeah. UT is on the inside. Like the real, real beauty is on the inside. Mm. Um, all men. Hello, oh, can I still talk? Mm. Hello. Yeah, your your connection was a bit bad, but you can still talk. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what I want to say is that real beauty is on the inside. Mm. Very true. Yeah, it's on the inside. Um, all men are attracted to what they see. That's how we create it. The line is bad. Marion, do you want to text him? Or yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll message. I'll send him the ring. And 
is the woman with the beard on the inside. And that is what I have to say. That's all okay. I know. Okay, so 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 Nee, you mentioned a point there that beauty is is in the inside. But it's just like anyone's like all of us. I don't know what you're thinking. You don't know what I'm thinking. So look look at it from a beauty point of view. Until I said I say something, then you understand. So how does that beauty come out for anyone to see? Yeah. That's true. Right. The same scripture said that if you if you, if you tell us it if um what good is it you know putting um, um uh, the light on and put it under a table it needs to be on the table so it can brighten the room. So if the beauty is in that is in his inside and the person can't see it, and even the person whom the beauty is, is belongs to can't see it, then what good is it to anyone? Mm-hmm. True. True. Thank you. Wow. Okay. If, Do you have a question? Yeah, if I can. No, it's not a question, it's just a contribution. Yeah, it's a, if I can add something about what uh, uh, someone just said, the beauty is inside, but before you, you can get from the, to, to the inside, you need the physical attraction to be able to see the inside. So what is, in, what is inside to be present outside for uh, to attract the person to get inside and get uh, what you have inside of you, so. Well. That's 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 a point taken, but then also that could be a front, right? That beauty new you know it will be you need something. If the physical could be a could be something, okay, it will come out. And that is where now if you you know, I think um, was it Bella or no, I think it was fate that was you were saying that if you don't do your due diligence, you can easily get trapped in that bit, and then before you realize it's way too late. Yeah. That's true. And I and I'll make one last point. I think that, so if we're talking about, you know, BBLs and things like that, if you have like a scale of uh, beauty, right? There's like no makeup. There's just, you know, out the shower, nothing on. And then on the extreme is that BBL, um, you know, implants, lips, everything's fake, right? And so if you really think about it, they're, they're so far on the extreme, right? It's not even wise to see them as the ideal model of what a woman should look like, right? It's good to kind of look at them, for, but they're so far on the extreme. Um, and, you know, I know that women say, you know, makeup's not for us, which I, I may agree with that. But I, what we look for, we just want to see you in your, be, you know, being your best self. And there's a difference between enhancing your beauty and covering it up. And we don't want you to mask who you really are and add things. That's not like, that's not you. That's not yours. I want to see what you have. And you'd be surprised. Again, men have a range, right? So you don't have to look like her to get a guy. You just need to be the best you and you let the man choose. And men choose women of all sizes all the time all looks all the time um and and one last thing is it should not be your job to try to trick someone into finding you attractive they should they should want you as you are doesn't mean you can't make improvements but you know they meet you a certain way the assumption is you'll stay that way but if that's not who you really are then you know down the line what what do we really have so that's all i'll say Awesome. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Jarrell. Um, I think your time is up, but yes. <laughs> we want to have you again if you're available. Yes, uh, I am available. Things we did not talk about. This is just the surface of things. And so um, we would maybe that would be more towards marriage as well, like things that happens in marriage and the preparation towards be, the preparation towards marriage. Um, yeah there's some deeper things I need to ask you. So yes, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> and so I don't know what the other ladies have to say. Uh, Miss Princess, uh, before he goes, I don't know if you have a question. Um, 10 one, 
Wani, if there's any question that you have, any questions, um, if it's a long winding one, we can leave it till the next time we have him on. But if it's a very brief one, we can let him know and he can tell us later or tell us now. Any, we haven't heard from Princess and, and you, so let us know, Dillis. Okay, I think you're good. Hi, this is, uh, oh, this, okay. is, this is Dillis. Hi. How are you? Um, I'm sorry, I came in late. Uh, I was taking care of some stuff. Okay. Uh, I wanted to share my experience, you know, uh, how I got my husband as a woman. I had to pray mm -hmm. and ask God, you know, uh, because uh, when I was growing up, I've always learned to love, to love, uh, like when I have somebody whom I love, I always like want to do my best to keep myself for that person. But, uh, uh, but when I, when I, when I had it in mind, I had to, you know, talk one-on-one -on -one with my mom. I said, so my mom said, this thing you are you are so being so desperate for a man like that it won't work. I've always been the one being desperate for a man, so you have to change your mentality. Wait for that man to come and dig you from that hole. Don't be so desperate for a man. One or oh, um, one of the things that we ladies we fall into is because when we see a man is so attractive, we 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 are just so desperate for the person. Don't be desperate for a man. Wait for a man to come and dig you from that hole. Because when you show a mind that you are too desperate, they're going to, you know, use you anyhow. They're just going to disrespect you and feel like, you know, without them, you cannot breathe. No. Wait for that man to come and dig you from that hole. It came uh, at one point in time, I had to sit, pray, and I asked God, I want my mind to come and look for me, not me traveling places to go and look for a man. And my man came right from Germany to come and get married to me from the United States. Without me giving him a visa or anything, he came to the United States and got married to me. So that's my own little advice. Uh, I mean, my own little idea. Don't be desperate for a man. Wait for that man to come and take you where you are. Because if you want proof to be desperate, they're going to use you. That's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have to release our guest right now. Yes. <laughs> we need to respect his time. And also to say thank you. We are so blessed. Like I said, this is the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Where I wanted this to go is not going there. <laughs> we'll to... Next time. Next time. Yeah. Next time. This is the pro game. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll go deeper into things, but we are so honored and so blessed to have you um, to hear things from a man's perspective as the peace really got to me. You saying that you guys need peace. We will yeah. give you peace. Don't worry. We'll give you all the peace in this world you may need. Yes. And I want to say thank you for sharing your, your experience and the nuggets in your book with us. And Miss Rebecca, thank you so much for allowing your husband to be here and sharing him with all of us and giving us insights and wisdom to how to move forward. So we're gonna to have to say goodbye to you, um, but we'll reach out later and have you know, conversation. But to the rest of the people as well, please, for those who need to go, you can always drop. Uh, for those who wanna stay and further chit chat, hey, yes, I'll be here and talk about any other things that we wanna talk about as women or as men as well. So thank you so much, Dr. True Love. God richly bless you. All right. Thank you so thank much. You. Everyone have a great evening. And yes, we'll oh, talk again very soon. Thank you. Thank All you right. So thanks. Thank See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.